Now what about, okay, so lastly there's also mixtures of gases. So we've talked about separating solids, separating different types of liquids. Now we're gonna talk about, what about gases? Well, similar methods to separate liquids that are soluble in one another. So basically, we use a similar method to separating liquids that are soluble in one another, because gases are essentially soluble in one another. It's called distillation. And again, it relies on boiling point differences, whereas it's slightly different from a chemistry point of view, simply because instead of heating it, we actually cool the gases. So basically what happens is gases are cooled until they condense. Gases with the highest boiling point are removed first because they're gases still. And, sorry, they become liquids, sorry, because they have the highest boiling point. So you cool them, they become liquid, and then you can sort of siphon them off. Then you continue to cool them, and then another gas will condense. Then you can siphon that one off and keep going until you've reached the, the last gas. So it's essentially the reverse of liquid distillation. Instead of heating it, we cool it and turn it into a liquid. So we turn a gas into a liquid, whereas in liquid distillation, we, turn, we heat it and turn a liquid into a gas. So there's a slight difference there. So the, this process is used to separate the components of air, okay? So for instance, if you've ever wondered how they actually get liquid nitrogen, just to be liquid and nitrogen, they use this process. They, condense the liquid, the, air, the nitrogen into liquid, and then take it away, and that leaves over some oxygen and whatever else is in the air at the time. Additionally, we can use gas centrifuges to separate mixtures. When the gaseous mixture is spun at high speeds in the centrifuge, the heavier molecules collect at the side, so bigger gas molecules will stick to the side, whereas the lighter ones will be in the middle. This leaves a mixture near the center with a higher proportion of the light molecules. So you'll have light molecules in the middle, heavy molecules on the outside. This process relies on the gases having different molecular weights. So the, the molecular mass of each molecule is the property that we're exploiting. So each gas has a different molecular weight, which is a property. And so that's what we're exploiting in this case. And we use this in the production of some radioactive materials. So this covers all of the separation techniques that we use to separate different mixtures. So we talked about separating solids from solids, solids from liquids, liquids from liquids, and gases from gases. So we've looked at all sorts of different separation techniques. And so hopefully you've learned something about the different separation techniques that you've seen. And hopefully you've understood what each one does. Okay, so we'll move on to the question segment now and see if you can answer some questions. So assess the use of fractional distillation to separate oxygen and nitrogen from air. So essentially we're talking about, well, if we use this distillation process, how well does it work um, at separating nitrogen and oxygen? So fractional distillation can be used successfully to separate nitrogen and oxygen from air once the air has been liquefied. Nitrogen and oxygen have different boiling points. So oxygen has negative 183, whereas nitrogen is negative 196 which allows them to be boiled and condensed separately. So nitrogen will vaporize first, followed by oxygen. 